Stephen King, we also, of course, have news of the Biden administration looking at these tax proposals. That's the next item on their agenda, looking for higher taxes for anyone above uh, who earns above four hundred thousand dollars a year. It, does that actually keep a check on inflation at the margins? Well, it keeps a check to a certain degree on the size of the budget deficit and the additions to government debt. Um, and to that extent, it means there's no longer a kind of permanently open checkbook uh, whereby you can spend, spend, spend without actually raising taxes. And frankly, the history of periods when you have these big increases in government debt, you know, mostly during wartime, uh, mo and most recently, of course, during the pandemic, is that once the sort of crisis is out of the way, you know, someone somewhere has to pay for it. And often you find it's taxes that go up. And we've already had that kind of announcement from the UK over the last couple of weeks, the prospect of higher corporation taxes coming through in a couple of years' time. I think the US is providing a similar kind of signal to suggest, yes, we have to pay for this one way or another, and higher taxes are probably the most obvious way of doing it. What's your take on inflation? Are we going to see runaway inflation? Or, and if we do see, maybe not runaway inflation, but some kind of inflation that you know, surprises economists to the upside, uh, do we see it in the next two to three months, or could it take longer? I think most economists, frankly, do expect inflation to pick up over the next few months, partly because of the increase in commodity prices that we've already seen. That's kind of baked in the cake. What I think is more relevant is what happens later this year into 2022 and beyond. Uh, is there likely to be a sort of sudden permanent shift upwards in inflationary expectations that goes far beyond what central bankers themselves um, have so far achieved? Now, one reason why you might think this is going to happen is because of the average inflation targeting regime of the Federal Reserve basically more relaxed about the idea of inflationary overshoots in the future uh, than might have been the case in the past. A second reason, of course, is simply the scale of the fiscal stimulus in the U.S. in particular coming through uh, during the course of this year. But I think the key thing here is really that the market's wrestling with massive uncertainty. We've had lots of inflationary warnings over the last 10, 20 years. Very few of them have really come to anything that's been significant. Uh, but this time around, we have uncertainty associated not just with the size of the policy stimulus, but also with a possible economic scarring coming through from the pandemic. Put those two things together, you have uncertainties both in terms of the scale of the demand pickup and also uncertainty over the availability of supply. So the chances of policymakers getting it wrong, unintentionally perhaps, are higher now than they might have been in the uh, last 20 years or so. Uh, actually, speaking of uncertainty, first off, I wanted to show, to, to visualize the funding gap here. This is... Um, U.S. receipts, tax receipts as a percentage of GDP. The chart goes back to before me. But in the middle is the 1990s when we hit a high under the Clinton administration, and then the trend is down, down, down. Probably a difficult ship to turn around. Um, but I wonder, when you talk about uncertainty, Stephen, uh, what do you think about the possibilities of unintended consequences from, you know, $7.3 trillion of emergency spending from the Federal Reserve since the beginning of the pandemic, added to $6 trillion of stimulus from the federal government. Doesn't that kind of, you know, 65% of GDP and stimulus spending also uh, give the possibility of unintended consequences? Well, first of all, it's important to recognize that, that you know, the governments have done probably the right thing under the circumstances. Here we were faced with these huge lockdowns associated with trying to control the pandemic. And the risk in lockdowns is that you have <clears throat> countless uh, companies going bust. You want to avoid that. You want them to be in a position to actually employ people and make products and make profits, frankly, um, in the recovery phase that eventually comes through. And here we are with the recovery phase now beginning to come through. The hope is that all this extra government borrowing um, has sustained companies that would otherwise have disappeared. And that in itself must be a good thing. You're better off doing that than doing nothing. Um, on the other hand, it is also true that um, uh, budget deficits are significantly bigger than people might have originally anticipated. We know from the beginning of this year that's led to um, increases in the 10-year bond yield, uh, which of course is the discount rate you apply to valuations of stocks. And at the same time, the stock market has been incredibly strong over the last 12 months, partly thanks to monetary stimulus. So one danger here is that um, you have the sort of law of unintended consequences, namely that you have rises in bond yields, which begin to have negative effects on riskier assets elsewhere.